So we were talking about American transcendentalism until 1900. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I just discussed American Renaissance. So American Renaissance is a period before the Civil War of 1861 to 65. And the two major writers or two major works in those times are Moby Dick and Leaves of Grass. Moby Dick is a novel. It's basically, uh, you know, uh, about a whale and it has been written by uh, Herman Melville. Leaves of Graf Grass is an epic poem uh, by Walt Whitman. Now, the transcendental movement. The transcendental movement basically uh, if, if you could see this definition, individualistic, humanized, imaginatively heightened, not con conventionally religious, but spiritually, spiritual engagement with the natural world. So there were some schools of thought in American tradition, which uh, are good that uh, in order to uh, understand our world better, we need to have a direct relationship with the nature itself and by which they meant that uh, they do not necessarily have to have uh, a belief in, uh, in a divine. Rather, the nature itself can serve as a divine. Okay. Um, so major, two major writers from there are Rolf Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. In fact, they are said to be the founder of the transcendental movement uh, in the United States. And then Gothic canon in America, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, Nathaniel Hawthorne. So basically, both of these writers were famous for their mystery writing writings. Okay, um, their writings were full of uh, element of fear. Um, uh, Poe was a famous short story writer. Hawthorne was a novelist. And then uh, in the American history, uh, American literary history. African American have a very important role to play. Uh, so American history is kind of tarnished by uh, the element of uh, uh, slavery. Okay, so some of the writers uh, kept reflecting the notion of slavery in their works. Uh, I don't know this who is iPhone. Uh, Okay, please make sure that uh, next time when you sign in, sign in with your own name, okay? That will be really helpful. Okay, so Frederick Douglass is one of the major uh, uh, writers uh, of 19th century uh, who uh, uh, discussed in their works, uh, in, in his works, the issues of African-Americans. Uh, Frederick Douglass, by the way, himself was a, a black African American. Okay, now here I wanted that activity to be done. Uh, uh, hopefully, you no know, things are uh, much settled. You can see the screen as well. Uh, it was about uh, get Gothic canon. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's do it at a later stage. Let's do that activity for this slide instead. This is slide number, <coughs> sorry, slide number six. Let me just say a few words about it. So while uh, we were up till slide five talking about uh, the 19th century uh, American tradition, uh, we, we talked about transcendentalism, we talked about the Renaissance period, uh, and then finally we talked about the African-American element in literature. Uh, uh, on the other side, in Britain, uh, the Victorian period was on rise, which was recognized by the Queen Victoria. Uh, roughly, it ranges between 1832 to 1901. Uh, so here are some of the Victorian poets, uh, Albert Tennyson, uh, and they are British, by the way. Uh, Matthew Arnold, uh, Robert Browning, uh, the last touches by him is very famous poem, and then Christina or Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Uh, connected with that is a, a Victorian novel, okay? Uh, those uh, of you who, who are not much aware of the novel, 
uh, let me tell you that Victorian novel is uh, one of the best uh, uh, novel produced in British history. Okay, um, uh, it was an outstanding genre uh, in terms of its uh, popularity, in terms of its uh, reach to public, uh, and in terms of the interest of the public in the novel. Uh, the outstanding genre and the famous uh, writers of that age were Charles Dickens, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, and Thomas Hardy. All right. Okay. Now let's do that activity over here just to, you know, uh, gauge uh, your interest in it. So basically we have four writers now over here. Uh, uh, and I, I'm asking you to pick just two writers from here. Uh, Charles Dickens, Charles Bronte, George Eliot, or Thomas Hardy, any two of them, okay? Uh, and then send me uh, at least uh, one title by uh, those two, okay? So please write both of them like Dickens, comma, and then the name of the author, uh, name of the work, or Bronte, comma, name of the work, Eliot, comma, name of the work. Hardy common name of the work. Okay, any two, any two. Okay, you all have to do it right now and you have to send your responses in the chat. I am just opening the chat. Probably uh, screen sharing might stop. That is fine. I, I can start that again. Okay, uh, do you understand the activity? Do you have any question? Uh, there is a message. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Go ahead. I can hear you. Sir, we have to tell about the no, uh, the novels and poems that these. No, no, no. Just uh, the novels. These, uh, just the novels. Just the novels. Just. All, no, uh, yeah, novels. Slide number seven. Slide number seven. Just uh, uh, works by two of the novelists. Any two of the novelists. So Amna, for example, has written uh, Bronte, uh, Jane Eyre, and Dickens' Great Expectation. That is excellent. Uh, Isha uh, has so written. We have to Brante. Go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. So we have the names of novels that are written by Charles Dickens. Yeah. So can you put it in the chat box? Okay, sir. Good. Thank you. So Isha Hardy, the mayor of Casterbridge, Zan, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, excellent. Uh, Afra Siab Hardy, Jude the Obscure, good. Amna Munir. Uh, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, and Great Expectations, Muhammad Zain, Thomas Hardy, Old Man, and the Lady. No, uh, please check this one, Muhammad Zain. I'm not sure about Thomas Hardy's Old Man and the Lady. Please recheck it. Uh, the Pickwick Paper by Dickens, Amna Ghani, excellent. Ramsha, Charles Dickens, okay. Bleak House, good. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Beanish Anwar, Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Very good. Uh, Kashmala, Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. Okay. Uh, um, Fessel, uh, Hardy, Far From the Mad, Mad, not Madding. Okay. Okay, all right. Madding Crowd. And Dickens, Great Expectations. And then Sher Ali, Hardy, Jude, The Obscure. Yes. Abru, Fatma, Hardy, Return of the Native. Excellent. Uh, Aniba, uh, Elliot, Adam, Beat, and Middlemarch. Yes, though Middlemarch is written in a different way. Please check with that. Uh, Rania Han, Dickens, Oliver Twist, uh, Amna Munir, Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. Uh, A. Abbas Aiza, I think. Uh, so Hardy, Jude the Obscure, good. Uh, Muhammad Zain, I think he is telling the second work. Hardy, Mayor of Casterbridge, excellent. Kashmala Silas Marner by George Eliot, good. And Abir Fatma mm, Hardy, the well beloved. Please check with it. Uh, I'm not sure about this work. But the other one is fine Dickens, The Christmas Carol. George Ariel El Eliot, Ramsha is telling The Mill on the Floss. Rania Han, again, Eliot, The Mill on the Floss. And uh, who is this roll number? Uh, please, all the roll numbers in future enter with your names, okay? Anyways, the work is. Elliot, the mill on the floss, and Dickens, Oliver Twist. Uh, this is fine. Anipa, Hardy, the woodlanders, yes. 
and Bini Shanwar, Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy, Good, and Hijab, Zahra, uh, Dickens, Oliver Twist, and, and A Christmas Carol, and then Mubashra, uh, Great Expectation by Charles Dickens. Hijab again, Hardy, Jude the Obscure, Good. Um, Tuba Safdar, Charles Hard Times, yes. Good. Okay, excellent. I think most of you have uh, shared your works already. Uh, Amna Ghani, Jude the Obscure by Hardy and Muhammad Ahmad, Charlotte Bronte, Jane Eyre and Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, good. Uh, Ramsha, Thomas Hardy, two on a tower. No, please check this one, Ramsha. This, uh, no, this, this is not a work by Thomas Hardy. Bini Shanwar, Far From Adding Crowd, yes, by Thomas Hardy and uh, I think Isa. Uh, Charles Dickens' Bleak House, uh, and then Rania uh, Hardy, The Mayor of Castlebridge, Nadia Ali, Charlotte Bronte, The Professor. Uh, uh, okay, uh, though I'm not, uh, I, I haven't seen this work though, but I'm not sure either if it is one or not. Okay, uh, uh, Ru Fatima Adam Bead and by Elliot and Nadia Ali Charles Dickens Big Big Papers. Okay, I think this is this is good work. Okay, you you are really active at your end. Okay, uh, so please tell me, can you still see the uh, slide? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. sir. Got the answer. Okay, good. Uh, let me just close the. Okay. Now, students, I'm moving on to America, the realist period. Uh, so the realist period in America, which spans over 1865 to 1900, is uh, known by Mark Twain. I'm sure you heard the name uh, and you also have heard about his work, The Adventures of Mulberry Finn. Uh, and then the other uh, major writer from that age is Emily Dickinson, who was a poet. Okay. So uh, this is all uh, for today's uh, presentation. We covered, <clears throat> we covered until 1900, okay? Both for the American uh, literature and the British literature, okay? Uh, do you have any questions? No, sir. Go ahead, please. If you have a question. Sir, what is meant by resonance period? Okay, so it is called Renaissance, basically, the word Renaissance. Uh, we okay. did it in, uh, in the previous uh, lecture as well. Uh, so the word Renaissance means rebirth. Now, uh, in fact, we are better aware of British Renaissance or Renaissance in the Britain. So in the Britain, in fact, some of the scholars, they started uh, consulting the Greek and Latin uh, scholars and writers. And they consulted all those resources in such a manner that they wrote the English works in Renaissance times. They wrote the English works under the influence of the Greek and the Latin classics. That is why the Renaissance age is called Renaissance or it is called age of rebirth because in those times, uh, the, uh, the classics, the Greek and Latin classics, they got a new life, okay? And people started uh, using those resources, intellectual resources, okay? For the rebirth of knowledge, okay? This is also called Renaissance age is also called age of discovery, okay? Um, so this is it. Sir? Yes, go ahead, please. Sir, you said that Mark Twain was a realistic kind of writer. So can you please give an example of it from his work? That, okay. Uh, which, so, which kind of work? Okay, sir, okay. please. All, yeah, sure. So basically, realism is uh, known for the representation of uh, social reality, okay? Uh, so you do not always write uh, a literature, which for example is uh, highly uh, imaginative, okay? So I can give you example of uh, 
uh, a, a romantic poem or a romantic novel okay you might notice if you read a romantic poem in any language you might notice that uh, in a romantic poem uh, the poet mostly expresses his or her feelings uh, about you know uh, an assumed person or assumed beloved okay no notice the word feelings all right so in a romantic poem what you will read is not the representation of the social reality rather the inside feelings of the poet so if you read uh, huckleberry finn for example uh, over here mark twain adventures of huckleberry finn uh, you will see that uh, the protagonist is uh, dealing with the day to day realities uh, what is going on kitchen what is going on with his friends uh, running around you know doing various activities so this kind of literature which uh, basically uh, reflects the social reality is called the realist novel okay uh, in britain in britain the example of realist novel is the victorian novel a uh, small activity that we just did so most of the novels you people uh, titles of the novels you people shared with me uh, like great expectation is said to be one of the major uh, realist novel because charles dickens was representing or was showing the social reality of the england of uh, 18th century or beginning of 19th century 